Hi there, welcome to this video where we'll explore how we can use parameters to create dynamic reports and charts within Power BI. So to explain this, I have an example here. I have a table on my screen as well as a chart and I have some options to work with. So we'll see exactly what this is all about. So in this table here, I have loan customs. But let's say to the end user, you want to give a little bit of a flexibility as to what columns they can see. At this point in time, we have enabled the full name of the customer, email, as well as the loan amount. But we're giving the flexibility to the user, to the end user, to select the columns that they want. So we could just uh, go in here. So if it's the end user, they say, okay, I want to see the name. I'm not bothered about the email. I want to see the region, right? So they can go in and select the columns that they want, right? So, and it also depends on the order that you go in click. Okay, so that's achieved using parameters. So it gives the end user a lot more flexibility rather than just giving them a few columns and they are stuck with it. Okay, so that's one aspect of it. The second thing is with this chart right now, I have different dimensions shown on top. So by default, you can see that the dimension is by region. I can see the loan amount that has been dispersed by region. Okay. So what if I need to show other dimensions as well? So I could just go in and select the dimension that I want. So if I go and click uh, region as well as the state name, so now I have two dimensions added here. So I could just go in enable drill down for this particular chart. And then I could just click any particular region, for example, and it would drill down to state name. Okay, so it wouldn't drill down any further because I have not added any other dimensions. So it's not necessary that you go by hierarchy that, okay, region, state, city, and things like that. So it can also work across uh, unrelated dimensions. So what do I mean by this? So I have other dimensions here like um, purpose and gender as well. So we can decide the order in which I select the dimension. So now I'm just going to deselect a region here. And uh, so this is the default uh, view. So that's fine. I'll go and select gender. All right. Let me just go in and do that. Perfect. So now I see the loan disbursement by gender, which is great. But the second dimension that I want to add is region. So the first dimension will be gender. Second dimension will be region so let me just go in and select that because the order does make all the difference here so i've made that selection so now i could just go in and enable drill down here let me just ensure that drill down is enabled okay now if i click on female i will see the loan disbursements for females across regions so let me just go in and see that okay have i clicked it properly Yes. Okay. There you go. So this gives a lot of flexibility for the end user. So you just need to have a little bit of end user training to ensure that they know exactly how to go about this. But this actually gives a lot more flexibility to the end user, right? So we'll just uh, actually see how this can be done uh, using parameters. So we'll now explore exactly how this can be done with few simple steps. So I've just created this blank table and chart over here, and we'll try to build these uh, parameters and dimensions accessible from the report page. So the first thing that you need to do is enable these dimensions. So I can just go into modeling here and click on new parameter and I can select fields, right? So once I select this, I have an option of uh, assigning any number of fields that you want. So we'll take the table as the first example. So we want to give the end user the option of selecting the columns that they want to show on the table. So let's call this uh, field selection. Okay. And I can add in the fields that I want here. So across my uh, data sets, I can select the fields that I want. So let's go in here to customer. I'm going to add the full name and um, 
I'm also going to add the gender here, for example, right? Uh, from district, probably I'll add region, state name, right? So different pieces of information that you could add. Probably I could add the email address as well. I could change the order in which I add them. And finally, I will also add the loan amount here. Okay, so you can actually choose. So depending on your end user requirements, what are the kind of columns that they generally want to see, you could go in and add them as you like, right? Then all you need to do is create it. So I'm not going to create it here because I've already added it. So I'll show you exactly how it's being done. So once you create this, you will see a separate uh, icon show up under your data set. So now I already have a field selector here and it shows up as a single item not as individual fields. So let's see how we could create this. So all I need to do is just create a slicer here on the screen. Okay, so I just added a slicer and just add this field selector to it. There you go, that's all I need to do. Perfect, done, right? So you could change the way how it looks. You could go into format visual, make the necessary changes that you want. You wanna change the style, uh, to a tile or a drop down, depending on your needs, you could go in and do that, right? So the slicer is now available. So now we just need to configure our table to pick it up. So let's do that. So let's go into our table here and the columns. So the columns are gonna be picked up from the field selector. So we are not going to have to individually go and drag any of the columns here. So I'll just go and drag the field selector and I am done. So by default now, it shows me all the fields from here, but I could go and change it as necessary. So I could just press control and then select the fields that I need, right? So that's all that I would need to do, okay? So this is how easy it is to enable parameters for your visualizations. Okay, so let's come to the next aspect of it as to how you could get it ready for your charts. Very similar to how it works. So over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new parameter, right? And I'm going to call it dimensions, for example. Okay, so here I'm going to give a different selection of fields that is specific for the charts, for example. And I could say, I want to see regions, state, city, purpose, right? So you could go in and do that. And let's say I want to add gender as well. There you go. And you just click create. So when you're creating for the first time, uh, if this is enabled, the slicer will automatically get added to the page. So you could do that as well. Or you could decide to add it later. I'll add the slicer. Okay, let me just do that. Okay. So I've added the slicer and now to the slicer, I'm going to add dimensions. There you go. Fine. So let's say in this particular uh, slicer, I mean, I don't want the layout to be in this manner in the vertical list. So I could change it to tiles instead. So let me just go in and do that. Change it to tile. Okay. Make it look a little more appealing. I'll just put it right on top of the chart. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's a little more easier to see. And all I need to do is populate this chart with the x axis and y axis. So let's say my intention is to find out loan amounts that have been dispersed. So in this example, I have a loan data set, I have an amount. So I'll put that in the y axis. And for the x axis, all I need to do is select the dimensions. There you go. So by default, you will see the first dimension being added. So if you want to change the sorted order, you could just go in and do that. Uh, sort by amount, right? So it's in the ascending order here. So now I can just go in and select the dimensions that I want. So I selected region and then say state. So depending on the order that I select, I will be able to drill down to the report accordingly. Okay, 
So I hope uh, you enjoyed uh, watching this video and you're able to follow along with the instructions. Do try it out and do let me know in the comment section. So till I meet you in the next video, it's bye from me.